3D Boxing has the privilege of being here with Christy Martin, now known as Christy Salters. Uh, not just a woman's champion, but a, a woman a woman legend, the pioneer in the sport. Uh, how's it going today, Christy? It's an honor to have you on. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. It's good. You know, uh, every day that I wake up is the day that God has blessed me. So I, I got to go out there and, and try to make, make the difference in someone's life every day. That's my goal. That's the heck of a goal. Um, and, and, you know, you take waking up for granted, you know, waking up each morning for granted um, until you have like a near death experience. And uh, I don't want to give too much of a spoiler alert, but your, your documentary on Netflix, uh, Deal with the Devil, is doing really, really well. Um, yeah. but, do, do, well, let's get into that. How, how were you approached for that? How, how, how did uh, Netflix come to you? How did that come about? Yeah, it was just kind of out of the blue, actually. I get a call from uh, McLean Wayans, and and um, you know, he tells me he's doing this series of untold stories and wants to do a documentary on on my life, the rise and the fall, and the, hopefully we're going to get back to the rise again. Uh, and, you know, at first, I'm like, he's probably not even for real. Uh, but then more conversations came along, and and I thought this is a great thing. I was excited about it. It's Netflix. Everybody watches Netflix, so to have the opportunity to work with them was, was amazing. And then, of course, as we we went through the filming process, I got to hang out with Deirdre Gogarty, who I hadn't seen for several years. Uh, my old sparring partner, Jimmy Maloney, Miguel Diaz. You know, Mike Tyson comes on and talks. Layla Ali. There's. So it was really cool to to get to spend some time with with these people and and kind of relive some of the positives. It was it was it's a five star I would say. Um, I, I watched it with my wife. It was really really good. Um, it, it brings back a lot of memories, especially if, if you're my age. You grew up watching Tyson fights and Showtime Don King cards in the '90s. Um, you were a staple. You were a celebrity. Um, I want to talk to you. You said rise and fall. You, you know. I, you're doing well again now. Um, you're, you're an excellent promoter. I, I have a personal friend, Jose Barra, who's won on a bunch of your cards. Uh, can you tell us what you have going on August 28th and, and how people can can get tickets and, and go to your show? For sure. So August 28th, we're back in Myrtle Beach for the third time. Mayhem at Myrtle, number three. And we're Crown Reef, Crown Reef Resort there in Myrtle Beach. Each and every time we're, we're growing, the, the crowds are getting better. But the fights that I put together, you know, I'm not one of those one hitter quitter kind of promoters. If you're not really willing to fight, you just go find some other promoter to put you on. So we have a we have a card that's stacked with about 12 good fights. A couple local guys, a couple guys. Um, you know, I have my boy from West Virginia, Anthony Savillas, coming. He'll be on my show. Another one of my kids, Benny Aguilar, who will be coming up from Florida. But the, the co-feature is Victorino Gonzalez, who actually lives right there in Myrtle Beach. We're really trying to, to make a hometown hero with his career. But on top of all that, we have Don King Spider headlining the show, Alonzo Butler, heavyweight, cha- you know, going for the championship here before the year is over. And, you know, to work with Don King in this aspect is, is really unbelievable. But it's funny how, you know, honey, funny how the world turns. I want to ask you that. Alonzo Butler is is, is uh, been a heavyweight contender for a long time. He's got a really shiny record. I think he's thirty three and three. Um, he's from Tennessee, I believe. Is that where he's from? He's um, in Tennessee now. I, I think he spent some time in Tennessee, some time in New York. Are you, are you guys? Are, he's been on. Are you working exclusively with him, or, or how did it come about working with with um? You know, because he's a big name, especially for for smaller shows. I mean, he, he's a he's a proven guy. How how did it come about working with him? Well, it's because of my relationship with Don King. You know, in in January of this year, I I went down and uh, ran a show for him when uh, Trevor Bryan, who is the WBA heavyweight champion, fought uh, uh, Stavern Stevenson. Uh, And, you know, so that was a great show. And then, again, so that reconnection with King. And we've we've just been trying throughout this whole year with COVID is still a problem to find places to put fighters on. I actually signed one of my fighters, Johnny Langston with him, a, a cruiserweight who will be heavyweight, a cruiserweight champion of the world someday soon. Uh, so, you know, it's just working with King and, and that's how, that's how they came about. I, I want to talk to you about that. Right? Cause you know, Don King's a larger than life personality. Everyone for better or for worse has some kind of opinion, some kind of, you know, thought on Don King. Walk me back to the first time, I guess it was early nineties. Um, when you meet Don King, what's that like? And, and personality wise, you know, 
what's Don King actually like? Well, you know, well, that's, that's a good question. Really, what you see is what you get with King. You know, he's, he's uh, you know, loud, bigger than life. He's larger than life figure. He's a big dude. And then his whole personality and the persona, you know, when he's in front of the camera and, and with the people, that's what you, what you get. You know, you get the loud and the and the always the jokes and the promotion. He's the greatest promoter of all times, really. But when it comes to time to sit down across the table and do business, he's he's a brilliant business mind. You know, um, as we all know, he's he's been very successful with boxing and negotiating with the highest powers that could be, you know, the big attorneys and this and that. So I, I've learned a lot from Don King and it's an honor to, to still be working with him. He'll be 90 yeah. tomorrow, actually. He'll which be is, 90 tomorrow. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy. Um, I can't believe he's 90. Um, you, you said Don King is the greatest promoter of all time and, and he is. And you know, the formula I think was kind of simple. He made really good fights, you know, um, the best guys fought the best guys, and that's not really a, a trend anymore so much today. Um, so, so two questions on that: Is that frustrating to you as a former, you know, world champion boxer? You know, the best aren't really interested in fighting the best anymore. And can we expect better on your cards? Will you match guys tough and not record build and, and, and things like that? Look, um, on my show, my my guys, my guys that are under my promotional banner are fighting undefeated guys. So they're undefeated. They're fighting an undefeated guy, and and that that's just what we do. We're fighters. We're fighters over here at Christy Martin Promotions, um, and that's the thing with King. You know, he made the best fights. Uh, sometimes, of course, you know Trinidad De La Hoya is a great example. There had to be enough money to be made by everybody for Aaron and King to work together, but they did. They they worked together. They worked it out. You know, now we're not seeing Crawford should be fighting. You know, there's a whole list of those guys that Crawford should be in the in the ring with, but for whatever reason, and, and we know the reason, um, those fights aren't getting made. And it, it, as a fan, it's hard, and I think that's really why we're losing so many boxing fans to to um, the UFC and MMA events because they do fight the best fights, the best, and you know what? It's no big deal if you lose, you just get back on the horse and go again. Just like the real fighters back in the '70s, you know, the Hagler, the Hearns, Leonard, all those guys. Duran, they they fought each other, so you lost. You got back in there and fought the next one. Yeah, um, you know Ali lost five times, I think. You know, uh, Duran lost countless times. It, it, losses happen. You know, it's it, it's how did you lose and did you bounce back? Um, and, and that's something that seems to be lost today. Everyone wants to kind of protect their all when they lost come. Everyone clings to this undefeated thing. Um, yeah, but there are you can find undefeated fighters. What does it mean if you're not fighting the best, right? I mean, how is it? What does it matter? You know, if you're fighting all tomato cans, you could you know run it up your record up to twenty and zero, and you you've beaten no one with a win. I mean, what does that really say about your career? And you started your career on a draw, didn't you? Is that? <laughs> I, I right? did. Right? I did. Uh, uh, my my first fight was a draw, and and that's really what kept me coming back because I didn't want to. I didn't want to end on a draw. I, I thought I would do it one time and that was it. But because the first time was a draw, I needed to come back the second time to make it either a win or a loss. I didn't want to just have a draw. I wanted to have a better story than that. So one thing led to another and, and here we got to this really pretty, pretty cool boxing career. So I, I want to talk to you about that, right? You grew up in West Virginia. Um, you played other sports, right? Basketball, uh, baseball. Um, and, and I always say this with boxing, the first time you step in the ring, either it's for you or it's not, right? I mean, you kind of know right away. Did you kind of have that experience too? The first time you got in the ring, be like, oh, this is for me. This is this is this is different, I, I, right? I don't know if I can say that this was for me because you know, at that time, women couldn't box amateur, and, and in my town, in my area, there were no boxing gyms, so it wasn't like I could look at this person and for sure there were no women and say, oh, I want to do it because they did it, or I want to be like them. There, were, there was really no role model for me to look look to for inspiration. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I loved it, but where was it going to take me? And and sometimes people be like, "Oh, yeah, you're going to be the you know the best woman fighter." Jim would always say, "I'll make you the best woman fighter ever." Well, that's great, but it's a little bit like being the world's tallest midget, right? <laughs> but no one cares. <laughs> but it, it was interesting because I you know I I started boxing in the '90s, um, and I went back and I thought right. Like, there wasn't even a women's dressing room. There was no women's restroom. Right. There was no women's. I mean, it was just it, it was it was, you know, 
a gentleman's club, basically, right? There was there was no women in there. So, you know, what was that like? I mean, did you have to spar all oh, men? Were there other women to spar with? Or, or like walk me through the really, really early days of, of your career where you're obviously the only woman in the gym. Right. For for most of my career, I spar with guys. Uh, every now and then I would bring some female sparring partners in. But uh, that, I, I felt like sparring with the guys, it made me tougher and that I would be, you know, fight night would be easy. So I, I was good with that. Uh, but as far as like dressing rooms and things, I, I mean, I changed in a janitor's closet one time in South Florida with water, you know, like a, two inches deep, it seems like in, in the floor. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, we got we got put, you know, put in some pretty crappy places. I, I want to ask you, though, because women's boxing has has gone a long way. Right. You have obviously Clarissa Shields, uh, Katie Taylor, um, Sinisa Estrada. Um, do you look at that and be like, okay, I, I was a major part of that, that this growth in women's boxing, um, you know, I can hang my hat on that. You know, that, that has a lot to do with with my legacy, and, and and I really helped build that. I do believe that the night that I fought Deirdre Gogarty on the Tyson on the card, I really changed. I do think that that's the night that changed women's boxing and the way that people perceive women's boxing. You know, hey, no, these girls can fight. Um, so it's not a sideshow so much anymore. Uh, I do. I I really did think that it would be further advanced by now. Um, but for whatever reason, I guess it just hasn't had that female personality click with that promoter that, you know, the promoter really gets behind her. And it's still hard because the, the pool of women fighters is much bigger, but still, you know, the talent to, the, to create that big fight, you know, every, yeah. everybody has to have that, uh, super fight that they're working toward, and and it's still hard to find like wh who's the super fight. Yeah, we have Amanda Serrano out there that's getting ready to fight Katie Taylor. I think that is going to be you know that's a super fight for women's boxing. Um, but we don't have many fights to build into. Uh, and, and there's a couple of things I wanted to ask you about that, right? Like making the super fight, right? Stars sell the sports, right? When you have superstars, you can you can sell the sport. Um, the thing that made you interested, I was watching some of your fights um, earlier. It's like she really does sit down on her punches. She fires off her shots. She's just not out there flinging shots. Um, you know, she's look, looking to to dent you with every shot. I mean, you threw really, really nice punches, and you sat down, and you fired off your shots. You. And you knocked people out was my, is, my, is the point I'm getting to, right? Like you didn't just win decisions. Fans like knockouts. Do you think if there were more knockouts in women's boxing, um, it would it would – sell more tickets and with three minute rounds going to three minute rounds like men have would that help increase the amount of knockouts do you think you know when i started we, we were fighting three minute rounds yeah. somewhere along the line it got cut to two minutes i don't know I, I i take a stand different than what some of the women today take i i think the two minute rounds works in the women's behalf because i think you can stay very busy for two minutes you can punch bell to bell two to, for two minutes you know, so many women say, oh, if I had that third minute, then I could get I could get knockouts. Well, I knocked out 31 people in two minutes. So, I, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't have the, I don't think that's a good argument. And what happens when you have women that don't have a lot of experience and then you try to put them in eight and 10 round fights with three minute rounds. By the time we get to round five, six, they're tired. They're they're not ready to go the 10 rounds and, and the fight slows way down. So now we're falling into why do we want to see women fight? I mean, I just watched the crappiest guy male fight where I don't even remember who it was, but they were like throwing less than twenty punches around. Oh, I don't know. Was it the Rickendale fight on on yeah. on? Show? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it was. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was. Uh, you know, they called it a Robert. I, I thought Rickendale won, but like, really, no one deserves to win a fight like that. Um, like I said, you said you did you did knock out 31 opponents in, in two minutes, but Christy, you, you kind of had special power and, and, and you look for knockouts. Um I, again, it may be right, you can get people out in two minutes. Um but like I said, do you think that would help more knockouts? Do you think if women would look for the knockout kind of like you did, kind of committed to their punches, sat down on their punches? Um, do you think that would more knockouts would help sell the sport? Would would, um, would help bring fans? Yeah, probably because, you know, as a whole, I think fight fans, they want to see people get knocked out. They want to see people get hit hard. They want to see, you know, they want to see somebody get rocked and come back and, and hit the opponent harder. So, yeah, I mean, I just think that the, uh, you know what, the pace needs to pick up. 
you know, the pace needs to pick up. And that's for all fighters. I, I, I think in, in my mind, I remember I just wanted to punch bell to bell because I felt like somebody's always out there to critique me in a negative way that I wasn't busy. So if I'm punching bell to bell, there's not a whole lot you can say. You know, she's she's action. And again, that's what fans want to see. They want to see action fights. They want to see you giving it and they want to see you taking it. Which was what made you such a draw, action fighter, Sal, and, and you were a blood and guts action fighter. Um, what was the moment where you kind of said, I've made it, right? I mean, because women's boxing was something that was so obscure. And then, I mean, like a shooting star, you were everywhere, cover of sports, illustrated all the talk shows. Like, was there a moment where you stopped and like, I, I've made it? Like, I'm a star in, 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 in boxing and in, in the sporting world? Like, you know, and it wasn't just boxing fans. I mean, sport, just sports fans, average, you know, housewives, and, and everyone knew who you were. Uh, was there a moment where that kind of, like, hit you? Like, wow? Yeah, I mean, I walked through all the, those years like, wow. Because, again, I'm from a town of 500 people in southern West Virginia. And, you know, here I am in Las Vegas fighting a and then in New York fighting a Madison Square Garden, uh, fighting under Mike Tyson, promoted by Don King. I mean, come on. Who, who grows up even dreaming that? Especially me that I didn't I never thought about being a professional boxer. So, yeah, it was all unbelievable to me. I, I do wish uh, that that I would have had a good team around me and somebody that would like kind of slow me down, maybe been there before, slowed me down and say, hey, take it all in. Take it all in because this is, you know, it's a once in a lifetime thing. It's a fleeting moment. Enjoy it because it's not going to always be there. And, and that's what I have this little girl that's 12 years old. That's a hell of a fighter in Las Vegas. Her name's Busty, Zoe Bustamante. And, and I just told her that she came to my tournament recently and she won my tournament. And, and I told her, I said, you know what, Zoe, you're only 12, but just enjoy every moment. Like take every, take this win in. Take the next win in. Just every everyone be special, and and that's what you know. I think fighters, young fighters, that I try to tell my guys, enjoy it. I mean, we're on a small stage here in Myrtle Beach. One of these days, you're going to be in Las Vegas, and and then you can look back at this night in Myrtle Beach, like, wow, this is how I got here. Yeah, and this, you know, especially at the amateur level, um, there are so many more opportunities, right? But then, um, when they get to the pros. I, I don't know, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't, that women's boxing is still treated as an undercard, right? Like, you don't have too many women, all women main events. Right? You'll get one with Katie Taylor and Manus Serrano. Um, but, like, my kind of thought is that professional women's boxing needs to have its kind of own league, right? Like, the, the other major promotions aren't really doing it justice. If there was a women boxing league, so to speak, kind of stood on its own away from the other sanctioning bodies, Um do you think that would help grow the sport, right? Do you think that that boxing it, to a lot of people, especially older people, is still kind of a guy's thing and women, although they're, they're good and talented, um, it's still an undercard attraction. I think um, I do not think that a women's boxing league could stand on its own because it's about fans. It's about who could put butts in the seats. But I, you know, I, I didn't have a problem fighting under Mike Tyson. I thought that was a great honor. Yeah. I, I uh, fighting under Julio Cesar Chavez. Come on, that, you know how much bigger can it get? Trinidad. I I didn't have a problem with that. You know, to be the main event when I fought Leila Ali was awesome. Um, and a few times I've been the main event, but there's also a lot of pressure when you're the main event. You really expected to to pull in enough money to pay everybody. So yeah, sure. you know, do you really want that on you? And can you really do that? <laughs> and that's what. Um, you know, some of these women want to be the main event, but they can't sell 100 tickets. So, you know, how it's business. Boxing is a great sport, but it's also business. So uh, somebody's out there that has to be the promoter and 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 to make it make people want to buy it and make. But but it's the fighter's job to make people want to see you. Everybody has to work hand in hand. And um, right now, I, I personally, I don't I don't know. I, I know Katie Taylor is getting tons of uh, exposure and with the zone and Eddie Hearn. So she she may be the one that can can really headline a show, but they have to have a strong undercard right. of female fighters, not 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 really female fighters. Uh, no, I completely agree with that. Um, so let's get back to um, and I, you know you're talking about not selling tickets and when you fought Layla Ali on pay per view, 
it did well over 100,000 buys, which is on par kind of. It, it did more than what Terrence Crawford did with Victor Postal, and it's kind of on par with what you see with Andre Ward and Kovalev and Triple G when he fought Jacobs and, and uh, Lemieux on pay-per-view. So I, I know that was a special moment. Like, that's you and Ali's daughter. But you, you kind of did a really solid number for a woman's card. I mean, I, I mean, I know that's been uh, – that's probably been almost 18, 19 years ago, but – what I'm saying is you guys did did draw compared to men's boxing. You, you did a pretty solid number. I mean, is that something to hang your hat on? For sure. I mean, it was a solid number. We sold out the uh, the Biloxi Coliseum. They had to actually add chairs. We we sold more people there than Roy Jones, and that's Roy's, that was Roy's home for a long time. Um, so, yeah, it was a great show. It was a great event. Now, this is where we can say, did we get paid uh, equally to what those guys get? Heck no. You know, but we also and we did the sales, but also we didn't have the sponsorship money come in as, as those guys would have with the promotion. But um, yeah, I mean, I, absolutely, I'm proud of that. I think a hundred over a hundred thousand buys for a female fight. Um, yeah, that's that's not going to be touched not for a while. I, I wanted to to ask you about that, right? Because um, you know, obviously, you know, you you made good money. It was a legacy fight that everyone wanted to see. But she was like three weight classes bigger than you. <laughs> Um, and I give you full credit for taking that fight, as I always do when smaller men step up and fight, fight you know, bigger challenges. So I, I give you full credit. But in retrospect, was she just too big? Is that a fight that you said, you know what, that's probably, you know, there's weight classes for a reason, and she's not in my weight class. I probably shouldn't have took that fight in retrospect. You know, because I'm an athlete. In my mind, yeah. I, 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 she hurt me with the very first right hand she threw. Uh, she hit me high on top of my head, and, I, and the truth is I was out. I was done. That first punch, and I was done. Was that probably a, a you know, a, I don't want to say lucky punch, but like a game changing punch. I always feel like, you know what, if I could have, if I could have got it one more time, you know, if I could start over from some from scratch, go in and do it again. I, I think it's a better fight. But um, anyway, yeah, she's big. They do have weight classes for a reason. Uh, I would have liked to have done it one more time just to see. Man, you, you know what? Did she not? Okay, she stopped me. Look, now you got to show me for sure you can stop me. So I would like to have had a rematch, but it is what it is. Th that's the fight of spirit because I remember I was in college. I think it was 19 years old. Was that 2003? Was that when that fight was? It was 2003. Um, I, I think it was 19 years old watching that fight. And, and I remember, so I think Christy can win. And then, like, they stepped up and she was, like, three inches taller and 30 pounds bigger. You're like, oh, this is going to be a rough day. Oh, she was, she's actually, like, six inches taller six than I am. She I mean, is. She's a big woman. Layla's a big woman. She's, you know, she's she's very fit, but she's like big. Yeah. <laughs> she's big. But I mean, stepping into the ring, you still the, you would do it again. There was no intimidation seeing someone that much bigger than you. I no, mean, you I, were like for sure. I, I would I would have given anything at that time to do it again. Oh, that that's the fighter spirit. That that that's what we love to see. I mean, um, so let's get back. You know, we talked about you working with Don King, and now you're kind of. In the same line of work, you're a promoter. How did you get into promotions, and, and how long have you been doing that, and, and how long is that going? How, how is that going? Oh, well, I will say being the fighter is much more fun than being the promoter. But, um, yeah, I started promoting because in 2011, I had a stroke. Um, I fought Dakota Stone. I broke my hand. While in surgery, I had a stroke. So uh, the doctor told me don't get hit in the head anymore. Well, I decided I, I still wanted that 50th win. So I went and fought Mia and I lost to Mia. And when I lost to Mia, I was like, oh, no, if you lost to Mia, you're done. So I, I realized the stroke took a more of a toll on me than I thought. But so box, uh, promoting was the, the, the next way that I could fit into boxing. And I so I started, I think it was in um, late 2015 was my first show. And, and we've steadily improved. But... COVID is screwing things up, you know, like every time we get a little momentum burst, uh, it seems like here comes COVID. So, uh, and you know, that's where we are. We're back to here comes COVID again. So I, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm going to keep, keep on keeping on, get over the hump. And, and, uh, as I said, I have these three young guys that I think are going to move to uh, title contention. Why don't you give them a shout out one more time so people can look them up, watch them, and, and, and start to follow them? What, what are their What are the names again? Yeah, we have Victorino Gonzalez, who is from uh, Myrtle Beach. He's Puerto Rican. I have uh, Benny Tony Aguilar, who's from Crescent City, Florida. He is Mexican. I have Anthony Sevilla, who is my West Virginia boy from 
uh, he, he's Italian. So, I, you know, I'm like, well represented. Oh, my God. Yeah, but we have, you know, it's, I'm excited about Anthony Sevilla, the coal miners. I um, mean, you know, he's in the coal camps. He's from the, right there. Um, I don't think anyone in his family's worked in the coal mine, but, you know, he's it's coal mine country where he's from. Um, it really does toughen you up having that kind of coal mine, you know, being, being a coal miner's daughter. It, it really did toughen you up, and I, and I, I love that, that fighter spirit that you have. Um, I know from watching the documentary, you played sports with, um, you know, boys. Did you always kind of have that underdog kind of fighter mentality? Was that always a part of Christy Martin? Were you always, you know, trying to fight to, to fit in kind of thing? I think, um, you know, I've always had a chip on my shoulder and sometimes it's been bigger than others. Uh, a lot of it is I'm going to show you I can do it when people are telling me I can't. And, and that was part of it, you know. Some people are happy. Oh yeah, let her go play with the boys. And then some people are way against it. So I, I had to be, I had to be better, so they could be accepting. Look, as long as you're winning and you're doing well, people will accept you. You know, when you screw up, that's when they, oh, she's just a girl. We don't need her anyway. So I, I knew that I had to be able to play a little bit. Uh, and yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you're. I'm guessing you're pretty good at basketball and baseball. You're a pretty good athlete, but you you certainly shined in the ring. Uh, and I, I'm glad you're, you're still involved in the sport because, like I said, you're, you you were so important to to the sport. Uh, you were a star. Um, I wanted to ask you that. What was? I mean, you, you headlined cards, and you, and then you fought on Tyson cards, Chavez cards. But you also fought on a bunch of Don King cards, uh, out of Trinidad, uh, Terry Norris cards. What was the greatest event you were ever a part of? Was it was it a Tyson card or was it was it a card that you headlined? Um. Wow, I mean, it was uh that's a good question. Uh, you know, fighting under Tyson was awesome. Everybody, the the like the electricity was was just crazy in Las Vegas the whole week. Um, and then on the Chavez cards, when Chavez was the main event, it was like being in Mexico. So it was amazing, like the the uh, the response, the reaction that those two guys brought from the fans. So yeah, I mean that was that was probably the most exciting thing to me but whoa, whoa, let me back up no fighting in madison square garden was probably the, the greatest honor that i had so let, yeah let me let me back up and tell the truth everyone i talk to who's fought at madison square garden says the same thing what is this what's so special like what is it about the garden that that garner so much like what is it that's so special about madison square garden it's the history i mean you know i fought in the same ring as 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 ali and frazier uh bojack uh i mean carmen basilio yeah, the list goes on and on, you know, fought, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, they all, we all fought in the same ring. So that, that that's definitely tops it all. It, it, it is, it is the Mexico, Mecca of boxing and, the, and there's so much history there. Um, so uh, to get back to, uh, to your card um, real quick, I get, again, it's really, really good to, to see you uh, involved in the sport and, and hanging in there. Um, do you get a lot of women who thank you for what you've done and, and thank you for, uh, you know, the, the the strides that you made in women's boxing and kind of, you know, popularizing it and making it a, a kind of a mainstream sport? You know what? It's been um, it's been a, a tough, tough row because Jim had convinced me so much that uh, everybody in boxing hated me, especially the women in boxing hated me. And then um, – just recently have I, I started to attend like the Women's Boxing Hall of Fame. And, and I was there this weekend actually in Las Vegas and to hear the, the younger generation of women to, to say thanks, you know, shout out to Christy and, and Deirdre Gogarty for really changing what, how people perceive women's boxing. So I, I think, um, I think I'm, I'm understanding it better now than, than before. And a lot of it was because if someone says something nice to me, Jim would always turn it around to where, oh, you know, they're just trying to get close to you. You know, he always had something something wise to say about it. Yeah, yeah. In that time, in, in the early 90s, mid 90s, when we kind of, you know, started, when you became a household name, kind of, um, fighting on Tyson cards and, and other, you know, Showtime cards, it, it really changed the perception of, of women's boxing, where we thought it was like some weird freak show thing. Um, to like, wow, these women can fight. Like, they're good. Um, and, and Christy Martin is not a good woman's fighter. She's a good fighter. Like, she's a fighter, period. Um, and, and that's exactly what I, I wanted to be. I didn't want people to walk away from the, the fight that night, any night, and say, 
wow, she was a good fighter for a woman. No, I wanted to walk away and say she was a good fighter. And that's why I, that, that that's where a little bit of my um, disconnect with women boxing, I guess, happens because I just want to fit in. And I, I just want these other women to realize, let's just fit into boxing. Let's just be boxers. Let's, I don't, I don't understand why it has to be so much about women's boxing. Um, but you know, I guess maybe I'm wrong on that. I, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still confused. I just want to be a fighter. That's it. I just want to be a fighter. <laughs> you, you are certainly a fighter and people look up to, you know, like people still, your name still garners a lot of weight. Like I, I, I was telling you, um, when we were talking before the show started, a friend of mine, Jose Barrow, who trains out in, in San Antonio, him and his trainer were psyched that they were fighting on a Christy Martin card. You know, like fighting on a Christy Martin card. Like your name still, it has a lot of luster to it, right? Like you, that's never been lost because of, of what you did in the ring, right? Yes, you were a woman's fighter, but your fights were highly entertaining and you were a blood and guts warrior in the ring, you know, um, and that's never lost. You know what I'm saying? That, that legacy will go on. Yes, you were a great women's fighter, but more importantly, you were a great fighter. Thank you. And that's, that's the whole thing. I just want to, you know, I want people to remember that I gave it my all, whether win, lose or draw, I gave it all I had. And yeah, I, I think, you know, like a Toro Gaddy, right? Although you had a better career than Gaddy, but I'm saying Gaddy's <laughs> name will never be forgotten. I mean, oh. that, that's my, that's, that, <laughs> that's my yeah. advice. I love Gaddy, but he didn't have the wins that you had. He didn't have the legacy that you had, but he's never, he'll never be forgotten. And I think in the same sense that like, perhaps if you were, you know, if you did, if you if you weren't a blood guts, if you would have just won fights, perhaps you know on, on on points and and you didn't really test yourself and 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 really pick up the pace and 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 really go for knockouts, perhaps your legacy wouldn't have been what it was. But I mean, you were the definition of a fighter back in the nineties, and I, and I think that's what what attracted people. Absolutely. If I just went, if I were a safety first kind of fighter, let me look, Pernell Whitaker, one of my favorites, he's, it was great at what he did and how he did it. But if I was a female version of Pernell, women's boxing would still be back in the, back in the, before the nineties, <laughs> because uh, it, it took, it took the action. It took the knockout. It took the blood. It took the, the you know, the blood and guts warrior to get people to take notice. And what's interesting about that is, you were a fighter, and that's how you fought. But you had a lot of skill too. You weren't just a brawler. I mean, you had highly developed skills, especially later in in, in your career. I guess as, as you aged, you showed that you you, you weren't just a brawler. Um, I, I guess um, if you would have boxed more, if if you would have stayed off the back foot more, um, avoided more shots, you think you could have had a longer career, or was was the Layla Ali fight and then the stroke kind of. Was that kind of the, the, the ending, you know? What I'm saying is if you would have been a safety first technician, do you think your career could have went on longer if you weren't in so many blood and guts wars? Um, Maybe. I, I mean, I, I really think that I had so much outside distractions. And once once my contract ended with Don King, and and believe it or not, it, with King, it was a little bit of a, a little regimented. You know, you knew you were going to fight. Basically, I knew I was going to fight once a quarter. So I, I, and I stayed ready. I stayed in the gym all the time. So whenever he called me, he called me one day, one time on Christmas day, you're going to fight January 12th. Cool. I'll be ready. You know, it wasn't like some fighters. Oh no, it's Christmas time. I'm, I've been eating and drinking and taking off the gym. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. DK, I'm ready. Um, so I, I was always ready once, once my contract ended with him and then it was a little bit haphazard from that point on uh, the, the focus, not the, yeah, probably my focus, waned a little bit and then of course as I got past Layla once the Riker fight got canceled I should have retired at that moment because the that that took a big chunk out of me I mean I, I was so Riker was it like we talked about earlier everybody needs that you know uh, Frazier Ali and uh, Hagler Hearns you know you need that that big name competition that's to hype to build build to and once that fight was gone it was you know, it was like there was nothing left, really. But but I tried to stay in there, and I did what I said I would never do, and that was stay in for for payday. And I and I did hang around a little bit for some paydays, and it, it didn't work out. But you, you sort of, like you said, you, you fought Mia and stuff, and and you, you certainly earned those paydays, right? Like you, you you've done, you did the grunt work, you did the hard work, uh, building the sport, and yeah, um, you know, you, you fought 
later on. But I mean, you you earn those paydays, right? Like, I, it is what it is. Like when Mike Tyson fights Roy Jones Jr., he gets the payday. But he's done the hard work. Like he's he's created a legacy and and he's earned that. And then you know, for you not to have gotten those big paydays at the end, I, I think wouldn't have been service and justice to you because you, I mean, you put the work and you earn you earn them and and, and you built up the you know you built up the sport and. Like you said, you had a lot of fans, you know, at, at that time in the nineties, compared to what other fighters were being made, being paid, you were probably, I don't know what you made, but you were probably underpaid because you were as big a star as almost anyone in the sport. I mean, Christy Martin was a household name. Yeah. I, I mean, I was, I was getting paid well and I was, I was making more money than a lot of the male fighters. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I wish we could turn back the time and I guess, <laughs> No, no, then what we know now, and 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 do it all over. But God has a different plan for me. We'll we'll do the promotion and and bring one of these guys to the title, and and, and then obviously with Chrissy's Champs, my nonprofit, uh, to talk about domestic violence awareness. That that's really the most important thing to me right now. Talk to us a little bit about that then. Uh, Christie's Champion. When did that? You know, obviously we know that you know you're a victim of. Um, domestic violence. Um, but what would you tell any women that's in a relationship now that's kind of, you know, maybe they shouldn't be in and, 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 and how did you get involved with, with Chrissy champion? How did you yeah. start that? Chrissy's champs is my nonprofit for domestic violence awareness. And uh, we, we started it uh, about four years ago. Uh, and just through Chrissy's champs, we've done all kinds of really cool stuff. We did a motorcycle ride in Charlotte, which Showtime donated to, uh, fight tickets with the air travel hotel, the whole ball, whole ball of wax. Uh, so as the main prize, um, I do all kinds of things. I speak at prisons. I speak in schools. I go to domestic violence events. i uh, actually this weekend I'll be in Chesapeake, Virginia, speaking at a domestic violence event. Um, it's just, that's why God left me here, you know, to keep talking about domestic violence, bring the awareness out there so that, any, people have to know that there's help. You know, I think you get into this, you get in the situation little by little usually, and then you're in too deep. You don't know how to get out. And then you don't know who to reach to, to get out. But Christy's Champs, you can go to my Facebook page, Christy's Champs, and there's a domestic violence hotline number on there. Uh, call us, we'll help you. We will help you. If, we, if we're not close enough to personally come and help you, we will get you in touch with people that can. That's a great service and, and, and you know, it's 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 an unfortunately it's a necessary one. A lot of women are are in relationships and situations like that. So uh, you know we, we thank you for, for for doing that and offering that that service. Um, now your card August uh, August twenty eighth, so it's about a week and a half away in South Carolina. How how do people get tickets for that? How 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 do they how do they get tickets? How do they go to that if they're in the in the in the Myrtle Beach area? Yep, it's at the Crown Reef Resort in Myrtle Beach. Uh, if you want a ticket, you can go to eventbrite dot com. Uh, you can also, if like on my Facebook pages, all of it, the actual little, and I don't even know what this is called, that little scanner thing, you can scan it, boom, it'll take you right to the tickets. So uh, yeah, it's cool. We, we're going to have a great night. We have uh, Venture Engineering is one of our main sponsors. They'll all be in the house uh, talking to you about what they do, and they were really building up Myrtle Beach and helping to change the, uh, the, the give it a facelift somewhat. So yeah, it's cool. It is, it'll be a great night of boxing. Uh, and then the documentary on Netflix, which is, like I said, five stars. It's really eye-opening. If you're about my age and you grew up watching Christy Martin fight, you, you'll really, really enjoy it. It's called Deal with the Devil. Um, it's the untold story of Christy, Christy Martin. There's so much more to Christy Martin than, than you may have thought. Um, make sure to check that out. And, uh, Christy, I really appreciate your time. This is an honor trying to, you know, finally talking to you. Um, anything else? I'll give you the last word. Thank you for having me. And yeah, just check out the Netflix documentary. Um, they're telling me it's trending. It's like the top 10 of things that are being watched on Netflix right now, but watch it, watch it because it's, it's going to tell you uh, a lot of different things. One about how to deal with other people's sexuality, whether it be your child, your neighbor or whoever uh, to, to give them support. It's going to talk to you about domestic violence and it's just that underdog. Hey, you know what? If she can do it, if she can get up off the floor that night after being shot and stabbed, and get out and get back on her feet. So can I. It, it, it really is an eye-opening and, and motivational story. Uh, Christy, we, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, for joining us, and, and God bless. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.